OK, so we're going to start by finding our way to the um, correct uh, web-based software to use. So we're going to type into your Google search box, My Maps. And the first result that you get is the uh, My Maps about Google Maps. So you're going to follow that link and it opens up this page. And this is uh, Google's GIS, so that's Geographic Information System software that's available through uh, the internet. We're going to click Get Started. Now the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we're on the correct Google account because that then allows us to share these maps between us really easily. So if we go up to the right hand side here we can see that we're currently on my uh, Google account under my Gmail, um, elihebert gmail.com. So we're going to change that. So we click on that icon and we can slide down to find the right one and the one that I'm going to use is this one, dogsurveygeorgetown at gmail.com. So we click that. And now we see we open uh, this new window, but using for this particular um, Google account, this dog survey at georgetown at gmail.com. And that means that anybody with the password for this Gmail can then start to look at the maps that you create here under that account. Now, if you don't have that account listed, then you need to add it. So what you'd have to do is go to add account at the bottom and it will ask you to sign in. I've got rather a lot of accounts there. What you might want to do is, uh, what you'll need to do rather, is to use another account if you haven't um, logged into this account before. And we're going to put dog survey georgetown at gmail.com. You're going to click next and then you're going to enter your password and I will send that password to the team members via email. Click next and, and it will add to your, your account. So here we are at the um, dog survey georgetown at gmail.com. Okay, so we're going to create a new, a new map. First of all, we're going to create our project boundaries. So we click create a new map. And here we go with our um, Google map. We're going to find our way over to Georgetown down here. If you double click your mouse, it will um, zoom you in. If you've got a, a roller ball on your mouse, you can roll the ball to, to uh, zoom you in. There's also some zooming um, tools down here on the right hand side. So we zoom into Georgetown and what we're going to do is identify the boundaries of the project area. So that's the um, geographical area or scope in which you are actually doing your project and you expect to or hope to see some changes in the dog population. So for example we know that the, um, the project in Georgetown covers the main town but we also know that it, it comes down this eBank public road and covers some of the areas down here so what we're going to do is create the boundary. So the first thing is to sort of zoom in, find out where you are, check where you want to draw those boundaries and then zoom back out a bit, a bit so you've got a maximum, you can see the maximum area. And then you're going to go up to this tool here called Draw a Line. Click on there and click Add Line or Shape. And you can start it up at the top here. We just click once. Every time you want to make a point, and that allows you to, to angle that point, you just click with the left click on the button. So say we, want to, we, um, we think that our project area goes across here. Up here it includes this community over here as well. You see that I just keep clicking with the, um, the left button on the mouse to make those points. It covers all of these communities and up to here. So now we're just going to, we've, we've made a boundary around the area that we can see with the current map view. Now if you double click with your left button, that then sort of uh, completes the line. And so we're just going to kick click close then. Okay, so we're going to zoom back out and find the rest of our project area now. So we know that it covers this area of Georgetown. So we'll zoom back in here, make sure that we've got a good area to fill in and we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to draw a line, add line or shape and then if you just hover your mouse over where you finish the last line, it will start again from where you left off. So you start to get quite a clear border. So we're going to go all the way around here and here and again double click to end the line, close that little window, zoom back out. So again we're going to zoom in and try and find 
where the um, the boundary of the project area was. I believe it's somewhere around here. So we're going to again click add a line, click that at the end of the last line, come up here. Maybe it, it includes all of this area and then potentially includes all the way up to the, the coast. Again, double clicking to finish that line. OK. And now we're going to complete that shape. We're going to do one final line now, add line or shape. We're going to click right here where we finished the last one, all the way around here. Clicking as we go and then finishing where we started. OK, close that. And now you can see here we have this boundary that shows us the edges of our project area, it includes all those communities where the project is currently working. So what you want to do is change the title. And we're going to call this uh, the project project boundary and click save. Um, note that one thing you can do is you can actually adjust this after the event. So you can see we've still got our, um, we've got line four is active right now. And what you can do is pull these corners in if you want to change the boundaries. Maybe there's particular areas there that you don't actually work in and you want to exclude them from the boundary, you can do that. Um, if you need to highlight one of these lines here, you can just click on it, close that little window, and again, you can start to pull these little dots to change the boundary. It might be that perhaps the project area is actually more like this, leaving off certain communities that, that don't require any help. OK, notice up here it's got a little message that says all changes saved in Drive. That means that this particular map is now saved within your Google account under this Gmail address of dog survey georgetown at gmail.com and that means that other people within the team that have the same that have the password are able to log into this Gmail account and then look at this map that you've created. OK, so here's our project boundary all completed. All changes are saved in the drive. So what we're going to do now is create another map, which is a hotspot map. So we're going to click. Um, we're going to just close this one. Oh, apologies. I've ended up opening up in the my Gmail account. Let's click that. Back to my maps. Here we go. And we're going to create a new map again. I'm going to find our way over to Georgetown again. Zooming right in. OK, so this time we're going to do a hotspot map. So let's change the title of that now. So we'll just put this hotspots for roaming. Hotspots for roaming dogs. And what we're doing here is trying to identify particular areas in Georgetown where we know there's a lot of roaming dogs and in particular um, dogs that we have concerns around. So it might be um, uh, this particular area of the town where you get a loan of lot of roaming dogs and people make lots of complaints and your aim is that through the project you're going to reduce um, the population of roaming dogs in that particular area or change their behaviour perhaps but through sterilisation to reduce breeding behaviours that can often cause people to complain. So what we're going to do with this map is to point out all the different places in Georgetown that we want to make sure are in our survey. So our survey routes are going to go through these hotspot areas, picking up those areas of the town that we really care about, and where we want to have an impact. OK, so we're going to use a slightly different tool this time. We're going to use this one here, which is Add Marker. So, for example, we might think that there is, or we might know that there is um, often a lot of roaming dogs in the cemetery. So we will click here to add a little marker and so that you can you can write down cemetery to show that that's what this mark is about. This whole area is is an, a region, a hotspot for roaming dogs. Um, it's useful to have the little label. So, for example, if you know that there's a lot of roaming dogs that are around the bridge here, again, you can use the marker. Click here and put under the bridge. So we know that that's in particular where you find those dogs. You can also use that the other tool, the line tool, if there's a if there's a whole community or a whole section of road that we know has a lot of roaming dogs in it, you can use that that line tool. So we're going to draw a line 
um, add line or shape. And maybe you want to just highlight that this entire road can be a bit of a problem. It has a lot of roaming dogs on it. There we go. Polygon three. So and you might want to say just eBank public road. So it's that particular road that has a lot of roaming dogs on it. Or for example, if you have a particular community that all the streets in that community have a lot of roaming dogs. So for example, if that this community down here had a lot, again, you could add a line or shape, adding a polygon here to highlight all the way around that community to say this whole community, all these streets, we see a lot of dogs. I think, I'm not sure this, this might be um, a community, we'll call it that for the sake of the video. Okay, so we've got two ways of showing marks. Often we, we tend to use just these markers, but you can use these polygons if you want to highlight a complete area. Um, um, but normally we're looking at areas perhaps over on the coast. If you want to just drop a marker and say that there is perhaps a, um, a port here um, and give it the name, let's put say it's Port Noreen, for example, and say to show that there's a lot of roaming dogs in that area and click save. Now again, if we look up in, in here, we can see that all changes saved in Drive. So if we just zoom out a bit here, we've got now got this hotspot map for roaming dogs in, in Georgetown and all those changes are saved in the Drive, which means that when um, anyone in the project team logs on as Dog Survey Georgetown, they'll be able to see these maps in the Google account. Okay, so if we just click back this time, that takes us back to our My Maps um, menu, if you like, and it shows that we've created these two maps, so the project boundary and the hotspots for roaming dogs. Um, and now we can all see all of us in the project team with the password for this Gmail account, we'll be able to view those maps. Okay.